Hello, differential equations, friends. <clears throat> it's Ben again, uh, Ben Marlin to be exact. And I make that joke because what we're going to take a look at is solving exact equations. So exact equations are yet another named sort of uh, ordinary differential equation. And we'll take a look here real quick on the iPad. And the form of an exact equation is that it's going to be some function of x's and y's times a dx and some function of x and y's times a dy. That's kind of a mess and it's not what you're used to encountering. If you took that and went ahead and solved for the dy dx, that would be a little bit more like what you're expecting. But the particular thing for this is that that m that's being multiplied by a dx, if you took its derivative with respect to y, and then that n took its derivative with respect to x, those two things are equal in an exact equation, right? So <clears throat> the motivating example we'll think about with regard to that is that we'll think about x squared minus 5xy plus y cubed equals some constant, okay? For those of you who've had Calc 3, that is a function of two variables. And so you may be thinking about how to actually graph that. If you're like me, you're thinking, oh God, no, I don't want to graph that. <sighs> but rather, I would like to get the computer to take care of that for me. By the way, I, the way I said that, that's how old, old men say something about computers. They say the computer. All right, so this is an app, uh, this is an application called um, CalcPlot3D that was designed in order to let people draw things in three dimensions a little bit easier. If you happen to have a Mac, you have a built-in grapher called Grapher that works better than anything I know about for graphing a lot of different things. But here for something that's three-dimensional, especially if you're on a Windows machine, you'll want to go to a website. I know a lot of y'all are used to graphing things on Desmos, and we will come back and look at something on Desmos in a moment. But it's just, it's not quite as good for three-dimensional things. So anyway, I put in the left-hand side of that equation there, and y'all can see, if I don't tumble it too much, that we've got this kind of, a, it's kind of a saddle shape there around the origin. And if I were to tell it to add to the graph another function, and this time I'm gonna have it set B say Z equals two, uh, and have it graph, you can see that the place that it intersects would be kind of some parabola-like shape. And then if I go back and change it to z equals one and regraph, it goes farther down. And at z equals zero, they kind of meet, the two things kind of meet together and cross each other. And at z equals negative one, uh, then you would have some, some different sort of curves coming together. If you are looking at that and saying, oh God, Ben, I don't really see what you're talking about there. Well, that's, that's not uh, something to worry about too much. We're gonna switch over here and take a look with Desmos. Now, the thing I did with this is that I typed in our x squared minus five x plus y cubed equals c and let me let me actually do that to show you what happened when i typed in that equals c because that was neither x nor y it said do you want to add a slider for that and the best slider value for this to c is really at zero so i'm going to get the equation stuff out of the way 
and whoa, yeah, that's pretty neat. And if you take a look here, the intersection between the plane and the surface has this weird little loop in it. That's pretty cool. But if I, wow, I do not need that part to be so big. All right. If I take my C and push it up, and that would be like pushing that plane up, I will get shapes where things separate out like that. If I push it down where it was down below, I'd have shapes that separate out like that. So there's these various different curves you can get depending on exactly where you're cutting across the surface at. So, uh, so in, in any case though, the reason that we want to think about that is that if you've got a function like that, and I'm going to refer to it as capital F, and I calculate the F sub X, that is to say the derivative with respect to X, treating Y as though it's a constant, then I'm going to end up with a 2X and a minus 5Y, and the derivative of that Y cube will just be zero. Then if I calculate F sub Y, the derivative of that X squared would be a zero, and I'll have a minus 5 x and a plus 3y squared. And if I wrote that down, like so, that is an exact equation. And that's where our idea of exact equations come from. They are, um, <clears throat> they are level curves for some function of two variables. And um, so the way that we're going to tackle solving for them is by reversing this process here. Okay. So if I were to take that 2x minus 5y uh, and to integrate it, <clears throat> I did not need that. Thank you. So integrate this 2x minus 5y with respect to x, I would have my x squared minus 5xy. But then I've got to think about plus a constant, but the constant could involve y's. So I'll say plus g of y. And on the other hand, if I integrated minus 5x plus 3y squared dy, I would end up with a minus 5xy plus y cubed. And y thinks that x is constant, so I'll write h of x. Okay, so the thing that you need to notice is that the g of y is that y cubed, and the h of x is that x squared. And the terms that involve both an x and a y go together so that I can, I can solve for my function f of x, y by assembling them like the pieces of a puzzle. The minus 5x, y is in both, I only make it appear once, plus the x squared and plus the y cubed. And then I say that is equal to some c value. And if it's an initial value problem, I'll go back and plug in in order to solve for the C value. So sometimes that ends up getting you uh, solutions to your differential equations where you don't actually have Y solved for explicitly in terms of X. But that's okay, it's still a solution, All right? So let's take a look at a couple more examples here. And uh, so, sharing my screen yet again. So this one we're going to look at has 2xy dx plus quantity x squared minus 1 close quantity dy equals 0. Okay, so checking 
your m and your n, you check m sub y and you get 2x. And when you check n sub x, you'd also get 2x. Since those agree, this equation is exact. Okay. Now, then we can integrate the 2xy dx with respect to x. You know, that means y is just a constant. So we end up with just an x squared y and we'll say plus g of y. And then your integral of the x squared minus one dy is gonna be x squared y minus y plus some h of x. So your function of x and y here, you can see that the x squared y appears in both pieces. So we only make it appear once. And then it, uh, has a minus y to the g of y, and there's nothing for the h of x. So the solutions that you think about are going to be setting that equal to some constant c, and boom, you're done, right? That was an easy example. I was trying to do an easy one and a hard one, okay? Uh, so the next one that we're gonna take a look at um, has a couple of things in it to illustrate a couple of different ideas, okay? Um, but it's still not super hard integration. So this, we've got a uh, quantity, three y squared minus x squared divided by y to the fifth, quantity times dy dx plus x over 2y to the fourth equals zero. And we're going to make it an initial value problem and say y of 1 equals 1. So <clears throat> I say that this one's a little bit harder, and the reason for that is it's not in the form that we're looking for exact equations in. But <clears throat> um, we can put it that way. So like with separable differential equations, we're going to imagine dy and dx are separate quantities. And I'm gonna do a little bit of simplifying as I go along here. I'm gonna write three y to the minus third minus x squared y to the minus five dy plus x, um, no, sorry, one half x y to the minus four dx. Well, zero. Now, uh, that might be confusing because this time your m is listed second and your n is listed first. m is always the coefficient of the dx, n is the coefficient of the dy. So we still check m sub y, and that, of course, is going to be, let's see, minus four times one half, so minus two x y to the minus five and then when we want to check the n sub x we kind of know where this is going but the derivative of this y stuff just goes to zero and so you would have to take the derivative of the minus x squared so you get the minus 2x and the y to the minus five is still hanging on there so this is indeed an exact equation uh, when I first looked at it, by the way, I made a mistake. See, I saw this y to the fifth and this 2y to the fourth here that were just kind of looking messy to me. So when I expanded things out to get the m and the n, I multiplied everything by y to the fifth. And when you do that, the equation is no longer exact. So keep that in mind. Let, learn from my mistakes. You can't just take and multiply an exact equation through by something and expect it to stay exact. In fact, there are some, um, some equations that you look at and they're not exact, but there's some integrating factor that you can multiply by that will make it exact. Those are, those are tougher problems. Okay, we're going to mainly worry about just exact stuff right now.
All right. So in solving for this, we're going to take our m there and integrate with respect to x. So 1 half x y to the minus 4 dx is going to be, what is that? Uh, 1 fourth x squared y to the minus 4 plus something with y's. And then the other piece, the 3y to the minus 3 minus x squared y to the minus 5 dy. And so that first part there, you're integrating um, with respect to y. And so your new power will be y to the minus 2. And so you have to divide by that. So you end up with a negative 3 halves uh, y to the minus 2. And then minus. Uh, and we'll have an x squared, and our new power for y will be minus 4. And so we need to divide by that minus 4. That means it becomes plus 1 fourth, and then plus some h of x. So our function of x, y that we're assembling has this 1 fourth x squared y to the minus fourth in both spots. And then plus, oops, I shouldn't refer to that as plus, it's minus 3 halves y to the minus 2 for the, the g of y part. And then there's no h of x. So we can say this is equal to 0. And if you'd prefer to simplify that out and stuff, you can, uh, you can write it as x squared over 4y to the fourth minus 3 over 2y to the minus 2. g's 2y to the 2 equals 0. Or for that matter, get things on both sides and cross multiply and have uh, 2x squared y squared equals 12y to the fourth. You could divide out that y squared, but if you do, you have to keep in mind that y equals zero is gonna be one of the solutions that gets hidden by doing that, okay? So anyway, that's one where the integration's not too terrible, right? So we ought to try to do one where the integration is a little bit more terrible, uh, but in the interest of time, and a lot more terrible, okay? So, uh, what we'll take a look at here is e to the 2y minus y cosine xy quantity dx plus, oh wow, I, hang on, hang on guys. I need to apologize and I need to back up. I failed to finish a piece of the previous problem. See this previous problem had this y of one equals one. Dang it. This is why I need other people around to, uh, to stop me when I don't say everything. Gosh. So if you apply that to here or here, either one is totally fine to work with, but I think I'll work with it in the second place, and I'm plugging in the point 1, 1. That means that I end up with 1 fourth minus 3 halves equals, and I have to, come on, I have to make another correction here. Okay, because this should be equal to the C. And that tells me what? C equals minus five fourths, I think. Okay, so <clears throat> x squared over four y to the fourth minus three over two y squared equals minus five fourths. And then you can simplify that if you'd like. So. Wow. Oop. 
pretend I didn't do that. All right. Okay, with that correction in place, then I'm gonna wander up here and look at the last example, e to the two y minus y cosine xy, quantity dx plus quantity two x squared. Nope, it's not squared, just two x, e to the two y, that's where my two came from, minus x cosine xy, plus two y close quantity dy equals zero. Yay, okay. And that looks like a terrible thing to deal with. It's really no harder than the other, it's just more things that you have to write. So here, this is our m, this is our n. m sub y is gonna be two e to the two y, right? And then minus, now you've got to take the derivative of uh, y cosine xy, and so you'll have one cosine xy, and then um, minus y sine xy times another, times an, uh, um, an x there since you're doing the derivative with respect to y. Okay, so tidy that up a little, 2e to the 2y minus cosine xy minus minus plus xy sine of xy. If now we check n sub x <clears throat> and again just like before we're gonna have to do a um, a derivative with respect to some things there, and the derivative of the 2x with respect to x is just 2, but the e to the 2y is just a constant. So we just leave it hanging on there. And then minus, parentheses, derivative of x with respect to x is 1, so 1 cosine xy, and then minus, leave the x hanging on, derivative of Cosine is minus sine, the xy hanging on there. And the derivative of xy with respect to x is going to be y. And so we close that quantity. And then uh, plus 2y and the derivative of 2y is just going to be 0. Okay. So we end up with 2e to the 2y minus cosine xy plus xy sine of xy. Feels like we went a really long ways to get to, oh yes, this is an exact equation just like we expected it to be. So once you get there though, that tells you it's okay to go ahead and tackle this by saying integral e to the 2y minus y cosine of xy dx and integral of e to the 2y with respect to x, not zero, if you're taking the derivative, it would be zero, but you pick up an x times your e to the 2y, minus, now we need to integrate y cosine of xy with respect to x. So the notion is that you're doing a u substitution, your u is the xy, so when you take and figure du, the du will end up being a y dx. So that means both of these pieces here get sucked up into it. And so when you integrate the uh, cosine, you, gosh, which way does that go? When you integrate a cosine, you get a positive sine and then the xy, and of course, plus g of y. We'll take the other one, and we've got to integrate, gosh, that's too long, 2x e to the 2y minus x cosine xy plus 2y with respect to y, okay? So, of course, uh, the 
first bit there, you're going to have to do a u substitution with your e to the 2y, and you end up with just x e to the 2y. This bit here, you'll do a u substitution again, a lot like you did before, and have a minus sign of xy. But then this last part, you end up with a plus y squared to go into that g of y plus h of x. And it turns out the h of x isn't anything. And so we've got f of xy equals x e to the 2y minus sine xy plus y squared. And that is equal to some c. This problem, we didn't have an initial value given to us. So we're finding a general solution. But that gets you some examples to get started on this. Remember, check to see if it's exact by taking those kind of cross partials. That should, if you've had Calc 3, that should remind you of uh, dealing with conservative vector fields, okay? Oh, my mistake, if you've had Calc 4, okay. But you check them to see whether you're gonna be able to find a potential function. You find the potential function by integrating and kind of just fitting the puzzle pieces together. If you find somewhere out there, there's a more algorithmic approach to uh, uh, finding out what the potential function is. And yeah, if, if that works better for you and you can read that and stuff, that's great, okay? But I always just view it as putting together pieces of a puzzle, so. All right, that should get you started. So exact equations, assignment four, I think it is. And um, I'll see you all next time.